strikes me uh, rather odd, and I imagine the committee and the American people, that uh, the Internal Revenue Service would, without verification, send out a refund just because they received a submission online through an online portal without verification whatsoever and deposit that money to an unverified account without being able to track it to an individual. But that's what happens, and it's $5.8 billion just in one year. Mm, your tax dollars at work, your tax dollars being purloined. Congressman Tom Graves grilling IRS Commissioner John Koskinen about a criminal scheme that has cost the Internal Revenue Service billions. Welcome in for Hour 2 of America's Forum. With Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth, and Miranda folks are sitting down now trying to get those tax returns in by April 15th. Mm. But if you're expecting a refund, uh, there may be a nasty surprise. Yeah, very nasty. There is aggressive scheme that is spreading across the country, and criminals are cashing in on this. Here's how it works. Criminals steal Social Security numbers, file tax returns showing a false refund claim then they have the refunds electronically deposited or sent to an address where the criminal can access it mercy joining us now for an in-depth analysis of this kind of wrongdoing the alabama commissioner of revenue julie mcgee who skypes in from the alabama capital city of montgomery julie we thanks we thank you very much for your time so the irs what, sent out already $5 billion in fraudulent refunds, which is more than half of that agency's budget. Why hasn't this issue been brought to the attention of everybody? Well, it, Congressman, it has been brought to the attention of, of everyone, the industry, the IRS, and the states. We, on a state level, have never seen the fraud be so prevalent. So over the past three to five years, the states have taken measures to filter the information coming into the states on the tax return in order to prevent someone's refund from being diverted to a criminal's account. That's how we found this latest scheme that happened this tax season in early February. So why are we just hearing about it now, though? Well, I think the, um, the states have been talking about this a great deal. There's been two meetings in Washington with the IRS, the industry, and some associations. Um, and when I say the industry, I mean the software service providers that, that sell their, their services to customers to file tax returns, as well as some of the state associations. But what, what you see is that the, no one really wants to, to raise alarm um, on such a global scale, but it needs to be raised as evidenced by $5.8 billion yeah. being diverted last year in refunds. The IRS claims they stopped $27 billion in false claims. So while they are stopping more than they are sending out, it's still too much. Yeah, but and then again, every we gotta... dollar that goes out on a federal level... It... I'm sorry, go ahead and finish, Julie. Forgive me. Every dollar that goes out on a federal level affects the states. And in Alabama, we haven't lost that much money, but we think we stopped about $20 million in fraudulent refunds last year alone. This year, because of one of the major corporations that offers their services, TurboTax, we know that many of our citizens use TurboTax. And last year, they went in this year to file the return, and someone had already filed it for them. Uh-oh. And boy, if they've got those uh, those tax preparers, those electronic tax preparers, somehow part of this, it can really be huge. Now, Julie, we've got about a minute and a half left in this segment. We've got more to talk to you about. But uh, the IRS commissioner up on the Hill the other day was trying to cop a plea. He says it's not completely the fault of the Internal Revenue Service. Let's listen to what John Koskinen had to say, and then I'd like to get your reaction. Before I got to this agency, I assumed the IRS got the W-2s at the same time we all get them as, to, as workers and taxpayers. We get them in March. Uh, so we're actually able to match, but it's, it's pay and chase in that regard. Uh, so is that accurate, uh, or has the IRS fallen down on the job? A minute left in this segment, Julie. Well, the state of Alabama takes uh, information from various sources, including employer information, to validate data. So we are already doing that. Uh, there are 23 states in the nation who use the same software we use. We are all already filtering information and comparing sources to make sure that the return information is, is correct. 
used to be in the old days we just worried about people cheating on their taxes now that's not the case so much mm -hmm. now we're worried about somebody stealing your identity to file bogus returns and false refunds and it's a growing problem because there you can't trace these people it's an untraceable debit card the money's going to so i ask people to pick a paper check when they file their return that's the fastest way these days. I know it sounds a little ironic. No, no, it sounds up. like good advice, right. Julie. And listen, we're going to bring you back to talk more about what you've done specifically in Alabama to deal with identity theft and tax dollars. Stay tuned. Stolen identity refund fraud, or SURF, is an example of this type of challenge. In surf crimes, offenders steal social security numbers and other personal information. They file tax returns early in the filing season, showing a false refund claim, and then have the refunds electronically deposited to a bank account, loaded on prepaid debit cards, or mailed to an address where the wrongdoer can access a check. Uh, that's Caroline Chirilolo of the Justice Department. She even gave it an acronym, SURF, this right. whole identity theft going on and swiping billions of dollars in refunds. Let's continue our conversation now with Alabama's Commissioner of Revenue, Julie McGee. Julie, obviously you guys are working in Alabama and we want to get into some of the steps you've taken as a state. But before we get there, you mentioned something going into the break that I think is important, almost back to the future. You're suggesting everybody use checks, pay the old fashioned way, correct? Well, what we're seeing is that it's almost impossible to trace the criminals because of these untraceable debit cards. So what we've done from a state is we are putting any debit card request refund uh, under additional scrutiny. So it's going to take us longer to process those returns because we want to make sure that we don't fund criminal activity. So if you file an Alabama income tax return and you request your refund on a paper check, that return will be uh, processed quicker. Julie, what advice would you give some of our viewers in case they run into any difficulties? Uh, we know of a few who have, are having a hard time getting a hold of their refund. They've tried to call the IRS. They're stuck on forever. You know the drill. It's press one for this, press two for that, and they never get any kind of resolution. Well, if someone's identity has been compromised, it is a very, very difficult chore ahead to file returns. Going forward, they can only file a paper return with the IRS. They can't file electronically. So the goal is to prevent your identity from being stolen, if at all possible. And it's not always possible. These criminals are very, very savvy. What you want to do is you want to choose a software provider um, that uses the most secure elements to protect your information. Once your information is in their software, it's in there forever. You cannot dis own your account. They have your data and if they are breached or hacked or have a disgruntled employee steal information, your information can be used for years without your knowledge and without your permission. So I ask people to check on the software services they use and only use those that really do a lot to authenticate your identity to prevent someone from stealing your account and taking over your account. Now, Julie, before the break, you mentioned TurboTax, and the folks at TurboTax will not admit they had a breach or a hack, but of course, a lot of people use that software last year, and uh, some folks have used it this year. Um, has TurboTax Absolutely. taken, Tur TurboTax done anything to, to, to make its system more secure, or what is the safest way to pay taxes? Any, any of those services you'd recommend? Well, early in the tax season, February, the first week in February, the states notified TurboTax that we saw a trend, a pattern of their account holders um, requesting refunds that the original taxpayer had not filed. We were being contacted, many states across the nation were being contacted by taxpayers saying, I did not file my return yet. I got an email from TurboTax thanking me for filing my return or I, either I got a questionnaire from you asking me why um, this return information was so different from last year. So early in the season, they went in and stopped and held returns for all the states and the IRS for a few days. And they added another level of uh, entry, login entry to the system to help authenticate the taxpayer better. 
So had that been done earlier in the season, uh, before it started, we might not see so much of the fraud. What we're seeing now is a new wave of fraud in that uh, TurboTax account holders are um, having returns filed um, uh, not under their original TurboTax account, but they're setting up a second account and using the information that was stolen out of the TurboTax account last year. Uh, we know this for a fact because we're hearing from the people as well as our deputy commissioner of revenue had this same thing happen to him March 9th. Wow, so it, it hits wow. close to home even for one of your assistants there in Montgomery, Alabama. Julie McGee, you're my kind of revenuer. Thanks for sounding the <laughs> alarm right there and we hope to talk to you again soon. We know you'll continue to follow that story and work on behalf of the citizens of Alabama. I got to tell you, Miranda, this, this just leads back to what Ted Cruz was talking about abolishing the IRS. When and doing people, the flat tax. Yep. When people uh, hear about this now, it prompts today's poll question. Sure uh, does. We all heard Ted speak. We covered it here live. So the simple question for our poll is this. Is Ted Cruz your candidate for president for 2016? And you can vote on this by going to Newsmax.com slash poll. So... That's one way to get it in there, real easy, newsmax.com slash poll. Love now, to hear from you. Absolutely. When we come back, we're going to hear from a representative from Campus Reform on what's happening on college campuses.